Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. We kick off today with one that is a little bit different and a little bit more fun, I would say, than our average kickoff. Justin Alvey is a hacker who takes apart hardware and tries to integrate AI services to show in some ways what the future of AI devices might look like. Twitter has been abuzz with his latest experiment, in which he took apart a Google Nest Mini and set it up so that you can actually run your own LLMs, agents, and voice models on it. Here's a quick demo of him using it to manage his message from various services, as well as having a brief conversation with a long-dead cultural icon. Hello, I'm here. Hey, do I have any new messages today? Hey, Justin, you have three new messages. There is one from your dad on WhatsApp about some unexpected snow, one from David from Twitter sharing a link to a research paper, and Jenny is messaging the tennis group on Signal about playing this afternoon. Thanks. And uh, did John message a few days ago about an event? When was it again? Yes. John sent a message on Friday on Messenger about a birthday barbecue at Golden Gate Park this Saturday at 11 a.m. Okay, great. Can you reply and say that I'll be there? Sure. I replied to John saying that you'll be there this Saturday. Oh, one more thing. Is Alan there? Can I speak with him? Sure. One moment. Let me get Alan Watts for you. Hello, Justin. How may I help you today? Hey, Alan. I'm just working on a demo right now. But I look forward to chatting more later. All right. Good luck with the demo. And let me know if I can help with anything else. Otherwise, have a great day. After sharing the demo, Justin gets into the particulars of how he actually did this modification. Ultimately, he says he's working on open sourcing the design, build instructions, firmware, bot, and server code, and he thinks he'll have something in the next week. Now, on the one hand, this is sort of just a tinkerer doing a classic tinkerer's project. But on the other hand... It's exactly this type of project that's likely to show us what the future of AI-enabled devices is going to look like. Speaking of things that people are building, one of the areas of AI that I am personally following most closely is music generation AI. You will have probably picked up on the fact that I love music in all of its various dimensions, and I'm super intrigued by the future of music production in an AI-powered world. Now, I'm not sure how much we're going to get full text to music composition tools versus AI integrated into existing production software that changes how we use it, but there's no shortage of efforts along that front. In fact, I've noticed two this week. The first comes from Brett Bauman and is called Songburst. Brett tweets introducing Songburst, my new AI music generation app. You fully own your music, unlimited exports as Waver MP3, prompt enhancer to extend your prompt, fast native and minimal app. Here's the demo that Brett shared alongside it. Then, just a day or two after that, I saw this announcement from Cassette AI, which offers something similar. They write, we're live, consider music production democratized.
I think we are getting close to the point where it makes sense to do a full show and video comparing these different services. So keep an eye out for that soon. Doing a quick survey of the industries that mainstream media is writing about being disrupted by AI. Reuters wrote a piece called From Mad Men to Machines, Big Advertisers Shift to AI. Some of the world's biggest advertisers they write, from food giant Nestle to consumer goods multinational Unilever, are experimenting with using generative AI software like ChatGPT and DALI to cut costs and increase productivity. WPP CEO Mark Reed said, The savings can be 10 or 20 times. Rather than flying a film crew down to Africa to shoot a commercial, we've created that virtually. Now, one interesting nugget from the story is how many of these companies are spinning up their own AI tools rather than just using off-the-shelf third parties. Unilever, which of course owns more than 400 brands, including Dove and Ben & Jerry's, has a custom AI that writes product descriptions for websites and digital commerce sites, and sub-brands within their portfolio, such as Tresemme, also have their own AI content generation tools. Part of this is due to concerns around copyright and data privacy, and certainly fits the larger trend that we're seeing of enterprises addressing those types of issues by spinning up their own solutions. Another industry that got featured this week around its use of AI was recycling. The Atlantic just published a piece called The Future of Recycling is Sorty McSortface. The piece tells the story of how at recycling centers around the country, AI-powered robots are being deployed, separating and sorting different recycling materials that otherwise might take people an immense amount of time to sort. The Atlantic writes, The issue is that it's long been too hard for recycling plants to sort material with the level of specificity needed to satisfy manufacturers that could theoretically use it. The traditional recycling methods used to sort waste, including sieves, blasts of compressed air, glass crushers, powerful magnets, and near-infrared light, do a good job of separating waste into broad categories of paper, glass, and metal, but finer layers of detail often go unnoticed, especially with plastic. The introduction of AI is apparently doing a much better job of that granular level sorting, and in so doing is opening up new markets. Now, interestingly, given those positive articles about how AI is improving industrial outcomes, the Wall Street Journal today also ran a piece called Companies Increasingly Fear Backlash Over Their AI Work. The subheader reads, Until now, businesses have assumed that leveraging cutting-edge technology was inherently a good thing. That's no longer the case. More and more, the article writes, Companies say they are concerned about facing public criticism over their use of artificial intelligence, thanks to rising fears over the technology's negative impacts, including job losses. One example they gave is Emory Healthcare, which is currently testing a generative AI tool that helps summarize recorded conversations between doctors and patients and auto-generates notes. The auto-generated notes are reviewed by doctors and patients have the chance to opt out, but Emory thinks that the benefits could be huge. It saves doctors time, it keeps their focus on actually providing solutions, but they're really worried that people are going to have a negative reaction. A representative from Emory said, It's going to be creepy to some people, potentially, so we're going to have to be careful about that. I don't think we can ignore it. The article also looks at Workday, an enterprise cloud application provider that has said that they've chosen not to pursue some uses of AI for fears of invasion of people's privacy, and also looks at Levi Strauss, who caught a lot of flack on social media earlier this year after saying that they were going to be using AI to generate images of more body-inclusive models. Then, of course, there's the big dust-up over Marvel Studios' use of AI in the opening of the Secret Invasion miniseries. And I think that the biggest point here is that we are in a very strange and interesting in-between in AI. The technology is clearly powerful, and for many people, clearly helpful in their jobs. But at the same time, it is so clearly powerful and so clearly helpful that it is engendering concerns of human replacement. Now, this is natural for any new technology, but is definitely ratcheted up to 11 in the context of artificial intelligence. Layer on top of that, the massive growing conversation around extinction risk from AI, plus the pre-existing animosity towards big tech right now, and you have a pretty potent stew of consumers looking very warily at this type of new innovation. The positive side of that, of course, is that it makes us less likely to sleepwalk into negative potential outcomes from this technology. But the downside is, of course, that something which could be used for massive enhancements and improvements in productivity and people's lives might fall by the wayside for fears that may or may not ultimately end up being founded. At the end of the day, I think that this is just a phase that we're going to have to get through. And if we do it well, it really could be a good thing that people are handling this set of innovations with more skepticism than they perhaps have for previous innovations in the past. That is going to do it for today's AI Breakdown Brief. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.